What's up guys, it's Josh, one of your Linode developer advocates, and welcome back to another video. And today I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to set up a Colenso server in Linode. So follow along with me and I'll have you guys up and running in no time. Before we get started, I want to cover what exactly Colenso is. Colenso is an open source Calendly alternative, and you can self host it as well as host it with them. But I want to cover exactly how you host it on a Linode server. And it's a super simple process. There are some difficult parts setting it up, but trust me, I got your back and I'll definitely walk you through the full process so you can get everything set up on Linode. And if you have any questions on setting up Kalenzi, they have a whole bunch of information that can answer all your questions within their documentation. And they also have a GitHub, which I will bring up right fast. Now let's go ahead on and get over to Linode so we could set everything up. So first things first, you're going to need a Linode account, which is very simple to set up. And if you don't have one, just check down in the description of this video for a link to get you started. The sign up is free and you will also receive a hundred dollar credit for the first 60 days after your account is created. And once you have your account set up, this is the main dashboard you will be greeted with once logging into it. And at this point, let's go on and start the process of setting up Colenso. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually set up a Linode and you can simply hit the create Linode button here and this will walk us through the full process. And I'm going to just go through and install this application on Ubuntu. So all we have to do is select under images. And then what I always tend to install things on is the LTSs. So Ubuntu 20.04 LTS will be perfect for this demonstration. And then the region, you wanna select the region that's closest to you. I'm gonna select Fremont, California. And then after that, you wanna select your Linode plan. And since this is a small server, it'll only be used by myself. And if you have more than one user on the server, then you may wanna up the plan but all I need is a Linode for this, which is one gig. So it comes with one shared CPU, 25 gigabits of storage and one gigabit of memory. So let's select that. And then now let's go down to the bottom. Uh, there's not much you need to do after that other than setting up your root password for the main account on the system. So I'm gonna give it a strong password or a fair password. One cool thing about Linode, they have backup plans, as well as you can set your own private IP address. But this is pretty much all we need. This is five bucks a month. This is pretty good for this server just to run and get set up. Just read the documentation if you need more clarification based on the amount of users that will be using your Colenso server. So let's hit create Linode. And we'll go through and create our server. Uh, I'm going to not save the password, but it's currently provisioning. So I'll be back when this actually is fully up. Okay, cool. As you can see, our Linode is up and running. And what I'm going to do is SSH into the server. As you can see, this is the access right here. Uh, you just click that. Uh, to copy it and the simplest way for me to install everything is by SSH into the Linode. So let's hop over to my terminal and get started. Now I have the terminal up, so let's go down and SSH into it. Like I stated, I just copied that command directly from the Linode manager. So let's press enter and that'll log us in. It'll basically, basically ask us to save the fingerprint into our system and then log into it using our password that we set up when we set up the server. And it looks like I typed in the password wrong, so I'm gonna have to type it in again. There we go. So we're logged into the server. And now the first thing we need to do is actually update the system because as you can see right here, it states in the server, uh, the list of available updates is more than a week old to check for new updates. Just run, you know, the sudo apt command. So I'm gonna run sudo apt update. And then also I'm gonna run sudo apt upgrade. 
and then I'm going to type uh, dash Y to answer the question at the end of it. But it's going to go through the install and I'll be back when it actually finishes. And just so you know, you don't have to type sudo. Uh, I only typed it out of habit. I'm used to using a regular account. When you logged in as root, you don't need to type sudo. Now, the first thing you want to do is create a user account. This is what I recommend. Uh, you never want to run applications like this as root. Uh, you want to go down and create a user account. So I'm going to quickly do that now, but it's basically add user Josh and then press enter. It'll go down and access for a password. So let's type that in, type it in twice. Boom. And then we could accept the defaults for all of this and then type capital Y for uh, yes, that all the information is correct. And we're done with actually creating the account. Now we have to modify the account right fast. So we can use the user mod dash uh, lowercase a capital G. And what we want to do is add this user to the pseudo group and then also, you know, type out the username, press enter. Good to go. So now we could test it out. We could just test it out by typing in Sue uh, dash Josh and press enter. That'll log us into our account. Uh, and now, just to make it simple, I'm going to go down and uh, exit out of that account as well as exit out of the root account and then log in SSH using the Josh account because it should have automatically, since we're in the pseudo group, we should have access to connect to the server using SSH as well. So let's type in our password. There we go. And now we're logged into the server as my Josh account. So let's clear and just to bring everything up to the top. And the first thing you want to do when installing Kalenzo is to install Node.js. Now there is a specific version of Node.js you need to install and it's version 14. And I've tested Kalenzo on Ubuntu multiple times, uh, multiple different ways, and 14 seems to work best for Kalenzo in order to get everything up and running. So let's go through that install first. And what I'm going to do is paste a lot of the commands in because it's very simple for me to do that. And it'll shorten the video a little bit. But don't worry, I'll explain everything I'm doing as I'm pasting the commands in and running through the full process. Okay, cool. So the first thing we're going to do is curl down Node.js. So I'm going to uh, paste the command in there, press enter. It'll ask us for our pseudo password. Let's go down and type that in. Boom. And it'll go through and download Node.js for us. And as you can see, it's downloading the version 14. So node underscore 14 dot X. And now let's just go down and install uh, Node.js now and we shouldn't have any issue and i'll be i'll be back when this actually finishes cool so now node.js is installed version 14 and let's just look at the version right fast so you guys can see but node dash v will bring up the version and as you see the current version is 14.17.6 for you know version 14 there is i think it's up to 16 right now uh and i ran into issues using 16 as well as 15 uh, but 14 actually worked for us. So that's the one I recommend for this demonstration. Now, the next cool thing about this application is it uses Postgres SQL, uh, which is a, basically a NoSQL database. So let's press enter. I'm going to update it right fast just to make sure um, we don't have any updates for Node.js or in any way. Uh, but let's go ahead on and install Postgres SQL. Uh, press enter. I'm installing two packages. It's basically Postgres SQL, uh, Postgres uh, SQL dat, dash contrib. So let's press enter uh, and then press enter. That'll, you know, download the package and then install it on the system. Okay, cool. So that's finished. Uh, now the next thing we need to install is Yarn. And let's go down and update the system server again or run the update command. That way it, fresh, it refreshes the repositories. And then next we'll actually curl down the uh, public key and then also add it to the apt package manager as a repository to actually get stuff from. So let's press enter. Uh, and as you can see, it added that. That's the actual key, the public key for it. Now let's go down and um, add the repository itself. 
and we have to run another command and this will put it in the list right here or add the list boom by using the t command so we're good to go and as long as you don't see any errors in here you should be good to go and then the next thing you want to do is kind of refresh the repositories again uh and that way we can get yarn installed and i'm gonna run the install without the recommends and it's an option that you can put in there it says no install recommends so it's basically like the dependencies are not going to be installed it's just going to install yarn by itself so let's press enter uh and it'll go through this process it doesn't take long for yarn as you can see it installed it you know super quick now let's go down and install Kalenzo. uh now this is the big port you know what i'm saying so it shouldn't take too long for us to do it but uh we we could do it in our home directory which is fine uh which is where we are but we're going to use the git clone command basically what we're doing is cloning uh the kalenzo.git file uh, and if we press enter after this and as you can see it didn't take too long to actually download it now let's see these into the kalenzo directory that was just uh, download it so let's press enter and let's go down to ls this directory so you guys can actually see what's going on but basically what we're going to do is install using yarn so let's just run yarn uh, install and press enter and i'll go through and actually install Kalenzo on the server for us now this may take a little time as well so i'm gonna skip ahead uh it's as long as you don't see any errors in here you should be good to go Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go down and configure Postgres. Uh, and this means that we'll be creating a database. And this is the database that Kalenzo will be using. We can stay in the same directory, it doesn't matter. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do is go into the Postgres account, the user account, and then create our database there. So, uh, and I'm gonna copy it so I don't have any typos but basically the command is create db and then you can name the database whatever you want to i'm gonna name it Kalenzo, uh which is simple and then it only takes a second to actually do it now we actually need to go into the postgres sql uh prompt and so i'm gonna go into that as well It's p sql that's all you got to do is type in type that in and that'll take us to the actual prompt so we can interact with the postgres server and it's similar to MySQL, uh, you can alter any database, but what we need to do is add a password to the Postgres account. Because whenever you create a database in Postgres, whatever user account you're under, that's the account that's actually assigned to the database. And so basically all I'm doing is hitting alter user, Postgres, and then a password. And I'm just giving a simple password, password one, which is fine. So we can press enter there. And that'll alter the role as long as you see alter role uh you're good to go you ran the command properly now we could quit postgres by just typing uh backslash and then q and press enter that'll quit us out of there and then let's type exit so we can go back to our main account now the next thing we need to do is configure the environment for Kalenzo. uh and basically what we're doing is adding that database account to the environment file it's basically a configuration file and they have an example within the directory and that's what i meant to show you guys earlier when i ls the directory and actually i have to type ls dash la so you guys can see it because it's a hidden file but the dot environment dot example right here that's basically the file we want to copy and name it uh dot environment so all we have to do is type copy and then dot env and then we could tab it out and then what we want to do is type dot env you know to make it an environment file and that's kind of tabbed it out but i'm gonna delete the example off but that's basically what we need we need that dot environment file now let's edit that file and it's only one line we have to edit so dot env and sorry i forgot to type nano in front of it but nano dot env this is the environment file and then right here where it says database url this is basically all we have to edit here we have to edit this one line and basically it's asking for the and you just follow what it says at the top 
Uh, this is the example. It just explains each column. So username, our username is Postgres. And then after that, we need to put the password. And our password is capital P A S S W O R D and then one. And then we can leave local hosts and as well as the ports. But the uh, last thing you want to just make sure you have the database name correct, which we have a correct. Uh, that's why I use that database name. So it'll be simple with the environment file. But all you need is Colenso or whatever your database name is there. And then you can leave this on the end where it says a uh, question mark uh, schema equals public. You can leave that on the end. That's fine. So now we're done with that. And then also, if you have a Google API set up, you can add the Google API credentials here. Uh, and that's basically a secret key. And I won't go through that, but there is documentation on how to actually set that up if you need to, which I recommend because it can sync with your Google calendar of whatever accounts you want to set it up for. Now let's go down and close this out, save it. And we're good to go on that. Now that we've created our database and we set up the environment file with the information to actually connect to the database, there is a schema we have to install on the database or basically set up the database schema. And there's a Prisma file and I'll show you guys that right fast. But if we go LS or actually let's CD to the Prisma uh, folder. And if we LS this directly, you'll see that there is a schema dot print. Uh, Prisma, which is what we have to set up. We're going to use that scheme, uh, but I'm a CD back up one directory uh, back to the Colenso directory. But let's go down and uh, set this thing up. And one thing we have to do is or we basically have to push uh, the database schema to the Postgres database using uh, Prisma. And it's a simple command. You just type MPX and then Prisma uh, and then DB. Uh, push and this will push the schema over to the Postgres database and you'll see it'll go through the full process it doesn't take long to actually do it uh, all it's doing is actually setting up all the tables and everything for you now that we have all the tables set up let's go on and create a user account to actually log in to Colenso once we activate the server and the way we do that is by using the Prisma studio and so all we have to do is type mpx and then Prisma Studio, Space Studio. So just so you guys know, but it's uh, Space Studio and press enter. And this will actually create a mini web server and show you the environment so you can make changes to the table. And this is only temporary so we can get that first user account set up. As you can see, this is the link to it. Uh, you obviously want to put the IP address there. So let's go down and go there now. But the port is 5555. So switch over to my browser so we can bring that up. So let's go boom. And then since we're at Linode, let's just go down and copy the IP address and paste the IP address in there and then put the ports, which is 5555 and press enter. And that will bring up the Prisma Studio. And this will allow us to, like I said, mo uh, modify that table. And what table we're looking for is the user account. So let's press uh, user, boom. And we have to add a record here. And this is basically, like I said, that first account. So let's type keep it techie as my username. And then also I'm gonna put that as my name in here and it's not much information you need to put here uh, you can modify the rest of it once you actually get into the account but then also keep it techy you have to put a email address boom so the next thing or the last thing we need to actually do in here before we save it is create the password now you can't just type in the password here it has to be encrypted and what we need to use is bcrypt and this will actually encrypt our password for us. So let's actually go to the site right fast. Uh, I'm gonna just paste it in, but bcrypt uh, generator. And pretty much all you have to do is type in whatever password you want. So I'm gonna type in that same password. So password one, and then let's encrypt it and then get the actual encrypted version of the password. This is what you wanna put in the database. Uh, and that's what 
Kalenzo is going to write any new password to. Uh, it's going to encrypt it using bcrypt. So it has to be in that format. So we got that done. Uh, we don't have to do anything else or add anything else here. We just hit save uh, one change and that'll save that change that record in there. So now we should be able to log in using this account once we have Kalenzo up and running. Now let's go on and uh, go back to the terminal so we can uh, stop this uh, Prisma studio. And then all you have to do is type control C that'll actually stop it for us. I'm gonna press enter and actually clear a little bit, but let's go on and start up Kalenzo because we're basically done with the full install and configuration of it. And the first thing you want to do is actually run it in development uh, mode. So let's go down and do that. Now we can start it up. Let's press enter. And then this will actually start up the server. Now the default port for Kalenzo is 3000. So let's go down and switch back over to the browser now. So we can bring it up and actually log into it. And so we can use this same link right here and just type 3000 as the port. And it should bring up Kalenzo now. And if we switch back over to the terminal as well, I just wanted to show you guys it's compiling everything. You can see, uh, I know you guys missed it, but as it was pulling up the site, it was building the site, compiling everything uh, using Node.js and all that stuff. So let's go on and go back to the website and actually log into it. All you have to do is type in your email address that we set. Uh, so mine was keepitechy at gmail.com and then talk in, type in our password for it. the site. Boom. Okay, cool. So the site is up and then just show you guys it. I'm not sure why it skips the first couple steps or the first step, uh, but that's one thing you want to go in and actually change. You want to modify your location uh, and my location is Pacific. So it's up at the top. So Pacific time, let's say continue boom and then you can actually connect to another server if you need to but I'm gonna skip this step and then you can set your availability which I'll leave as default but it, it automatically puts 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday you could change that up if you need to but let's hit continue and then there is an about me section that you could put you know a little bit of information there uh, or and you could put your full name there if you want to I'm gonna just hit finish and it should take us to the main site at this point. So now we have a Kalenzo server fully set up. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, go on and set up your own Kalenzo server on a node. As you can see, it was fairly simple to actually set the server up. And if you have any questions, you can always leave those questions down in the comments of this video. I hope you guys have a good day and peace.